Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the makeup that I bought for myself this year. And to be very clear, I'm just talking about makeup that I bought for myself with my beauty budget. So I'm not talking about anything that came in PR, and I'm not even including makeup that I bought with my YouTube channel's budget for review. There is some makeup that I had my YouTube channel buy this year so that I could review it. And then some of it I went on to like so much that I decided to keep it instead of giving it away. But in those cases, I conspicuously picked makeup that I was pretty positive that I wouldn't be buying with my own beauty budget, partly because I wanna keep those things separate, but also because I didn't want to get myself in a situation where I was just telling myself that I was buying it for a review, but secretly I actually really wanted it. I tried to make sure that I was only buying stuff for review that I that I had kind of like a neutral feeling towards. Like I'm interested in it, I'd like to review it, but anything that I had that like really voracious desire for where I was like, she's gotta have it, like I really, really want that and it's perfect for me. For those situations, I made sure that I bought the stuff with my own personal beauty budget. And then I did of course go on to review all of this stuff on YouTube. I just wanted to be clear with myself that I was buying it because I wanted it. And because I was buying it because I wanted it, the money had to come out of my budget and couldn't come out of my channel budget. So in a sense, what I'm doing is ranking all of the things that I bought on my own terms and in a way that didn't really have anything to do with YouTube. I'm also not including replacements in this video. So replacements for me are more utilitarian products, primers, color correctors, concealers, those kinds of things. I did buy some of that kind of thing this year, but I didn't have to take that money out of my budget because replacements aren't included in my beauty budget. My my beauty budget is specifically for extras, color cosmetics when it comes to makeup, and so that's the stuff that I'm including in this video. That's what I'm going to be ranking. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. My name's Hannah and I love beautiful things. I am a passionate lover of beautiful things by nature, and I think that that's a good quality, but I'm aware that if you let that quality get out of control, especially in this day and age, then it can lead to overspending and overconsumption, so I try not to let that happen. And if that kind of balanced beauty content sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. I guess I should tell you about my makeup in case inquiring minds want to know, but if inquiring minds want to know, then inquiring minds didn't watch yesterday's video, which was makeup that my patrons selected for me from my makeup collection. I put it all on in one video and this was the result. And the earrings and the hair extension were also like things that were requested from that video. So it's really like the entire look and I put all of it on, on, on camera in that video. This top though, I put on just for this video, this is actually something that I made back when I had my sewing studio before COVID, before we had to close and move. I had this cool fabric, it's like a leather look neoprene. And I just made this like ridiculous stand collar bat wing top out of it one day, out of like an extra piece that we had. And I totally forgot about it because when I made it, it was too hot. It's been too hot this whole year to wear it on camera. And now it's not too hot. And this is the first time I've ever worn it. It's like the first time I've put it on since I made it. Is it ridiculous though? Does it kind of look like a weird rain, like raincoat? I don't know. I, I feel like on camera maybe it doesn't, you can't tell that it's leather look and it just looks shiny. I don't know. All right, here's the gag of the video. I'm not just telling you what my ranking is for all of the makeup that I bought this year. I'm also telling you what it is that I bought. I mean, you know if you've been following me all year because you've seen my videos every month about how I spent my budget, but I didn't know until I actually sat down and went through all of the spreadsheets, or not spreadsheets, but the Word document for the year where I write down everything that I buy and add it all up. I do it in a Word document because I'm, I'm a Luddite. I'm like a fourth grader basically over here. I went through it and I added it all up and I only bought 10 items of makeup with my budget this year. And I didn't quite realize that. And so that's gonna be an interesting facet of this video is like looking back over all the things I bought and what they were and kind of how I'm feeling about it now via the ranking. One of the things is in the makeup advent calendar. I'm sure that it is, but everything else is out. Some of the things were in the advent calendar, but have have come out since the beginning of the month. Um, and I, I'm just like gonna leave a space for the one that isn't here. I'll tell you about it and I'll put a picture of it up on the screen when we get there. So I put the things in order. It was very difficult because even though 
I've decluttered two things. I haven't yet given them away, so I actually have them here and I can show them to you on camera. But I've decluttered them kind of for circumstantial reasons, not because they're not good products or even great products. They're at the bottom because they're the ones that have been decluttered, so they're the ones that were the, the most fail, failure, the failiest, the most failed fails. They were the, they were the, they were the ones that failed me the most, but I don't think that they'll fail everyone and I don't think they'll fail the people that I end up giving them to. So I was very careful in terms of what I chose. I like everything, even the two things I'm giving away for one reason or another. And most of it I really, really love. And I'm glad that I've retained most of it. I just feel like it's, I'm in a good place. Like I'm looking back over the makeup that I bought with my budget this year and I'm like, I'm here for it. I feel like it went well. So I'm gonna start at the top as I often do with these things because I find it actually easier to start with like my favorite thing, to start with the love. And I feel like I have to, even though I haven't been wearing it as much lately because I've been so obsessed with that e.l.f. cream cheek, I have to give the top spot to the Beauty Light Wand from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Spotlight because it's one of the best makeup products that I've ever owned. It's the best investment I feel like of the year with my money when it comes to makeup. And I've used it almost all the way up. I think that I've used more of it than, than I have used of anything else that's here. So all signs point to this being at the very top. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm even having a hard time kind of getting a swatch. I re it really is on its last legs. The applicator is very messy. I personally like the kind of hands-free applicator. I ended up liking the sponge tip even though I thought that I wouldn't. and my thinking that I wouldn't is why it took me so long to try this product. I actually like it and I don't mind that it gets messy for this product because I just feel like it's in constant use, but I know that that's a thing that annoys a lot of people. And here's the swatch, absolutely beaming. I feel like I've talked about it time and time again, but the thing that's amazing about it is that it looks so incredibly shiny without being metallic. It blends beautifully with other cream products and it sets down completely and doesn't budge, but it retains its wet look shine. My number two product from the year is also probably, well, no, it's not the second most used product. But since I got it, I've been using it a ton and when I kind of have it fresh on my mind and I've kind of gone in and out with this, like when I first got it, it was fresh in my mind and I used it almost every time I did anything with my eyes, I used it. And then it kind of like slipped to the back of the drawer and then I remembered about it again and once I resuscitated it, I used it again like almost every time I did my eyes and then it kind of slipped to the back of the drawer. So that's happened a couple of times with it over the course of the year and what I'm trying to say is that when it's front and center, like when it's on my vanity, when I'm remembering it, I can't help but use it on my eyes almost every time I'm doing my makeup. And it's the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Foil in the shade Milky Way. It's just so shiny, it goes with everything. Again, very, very wet look. Once again, it's a product that looks incredibly wet but dries down completely and doesn't budge. <laughs> it's kind of a theme in the top two. So it's a liquid, it's like a foiled liquid product that you can use anywhere on your face. I love it in the center of the lids. Milky Way is this color that's kind of like between silver and gold. It's like a gold silver. And this is one of the shiniest eyeshadows I've ever had. It was the inspiration for my video about the shiniest eyeshadow, the search for the, the shiniest eyeshadow. And it was tied, I think. It was like in the top two with JD Glow's uh, Good God. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's one of the shiniest things. I feel like both of those products, the top two represent items of makeup that I was actively looking for. Like I have been looking for, or I had been looking for a liquid cheek that would look really, really glossy, but that would set down completely and retain its wet look shine. And an eyeshadow or an eye product, something that would look so glossy on the lids that it looked wet, kind of like an eye gloss, but that would set down completely and be bulletproof and retain its, its wet look shine. Like I was sort of looking for that kind of thing. And I found it in those two products, or I found them in those two products. And that's why they're the top two, because I was looking and looking and then I found them. And then I indeed used them. Like, I proved to myself that I had been on the hunt for them for good reason. And it turned out that it wasn't just a fantasy, it was like something that I really did want and that I was really excited to be able to have and use. The third product isn't like that. The third product is Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Dragon. And I feel like a really brilliantly kind of cinnamon flame red that's a super velvet matte 
if I had been on an intense hunt for this, I could have found it elsewhere. Like I maybe could have gone to Mac or I could have like gone to some high-end brand or maybe Gucci, you know what I mean? Or maybe even like the Sephora collection. Like, I don't know if I had had it in my head that I wanted a color like this, like a cinnabar color in a really velvety matte and I had searched and searched K-Beauty. I could have like looked, at, looked in K-Beauty and found something. I think I probably could have found it. And um, I didn't buy this because I was like, this satisfies something I've been longing for and searching for and wanting. I bought it because I wanted it when it came out. It was so incredibly beautiful. And I suspected based on the imagery and the way that Lisa described it, that it would be something that I would wanna reach for over and over and over again. So it wasn't like it was the missing piece. It was like it showed itself to me as something that I might really love. And I was willing to spend my budget on it for that reason. I don't think it's as good of a buy for that reason as the top two. Cause I feel like having really looked and looked and looked and then finally found a thing that you know that you felt like you would have loved to use and then buying that one thing, that's better than being seduced by branding or marketing or like the celebrity behind, the celebrity makeup artist that's behind a brand. That's better than being like buying something because of packaging or buying something because of, of just the hype of it on YouTube, you know what I mean? And a little bit more of that went into this purchase, but it's still the top three. Like it's still the third one from the top because in spite of the fact that I got seduced by some of these other like less potent factors, it was a great purchase for me. I love it and I've worn it a lot and I really love the way that it looks and I do think that I'm gonna wear it forever. And I also do think, well, not forever, but you know what I mean, until I use it up or until it goes bad. And I do think that there are gonna be like lipsticks upon lipsticks upon lipsticks in similar colors that will come out that will call to me that I won't buy in the future because this is my perfect one and I like that about it too. I also feel like if I had gotten in my head that I wanted a Cinnabar lipstick and I had been looking all over the place, the Lisa Eldridge version, the, the velvet from Lisa Eldridge would be like my top choice. If I were like looking at MAC and I were looking at K-Beauty and I was like looking at all of these different versions of this color, if this was an option, it would be my top. So that's another thing that makes me glad that sort of it was the one that showed me that I wanted a thing like this. So there's the famous velvet looking bullet. And there's the swatch, although it's a little bit hard to understand. It's hard for, I think, the camera and the human eye to understand this color until it's actually on the face. And I'll try to remember to link down below the video in which I swatched this next to all my reds and wore it. Okay, next in the ranking is, I think, a tie. I did allow one to edge ahead of the other one, but I think it's technically a tie. I couldn't really decide. Um, this Cure Weiss blush and this Can Make Cream Cheek. So most of the things that I bought with my budget this year are cream cheek products. At the very beginning of the year, I mean, I this and this actually mirrors what happened this year overall with my budget. At the very beginning of the year, I bought five cream cheek products and five of them are right here. And these are two of them. And then over the course of the rest of the year, I bought five more things like very spread out or it might even have been six at the beginning of the year and then four more things very spread out. Of these top three, two of them, the Danessa Myricks and the Lisa Eldridge are the ones that I purchased more spread out over the course of the year. So it was like, I wasn't really buying much. I wasn't buying much makeup. And then on each of these occasions, like the one thing sort of presented itself to me and I was like, I'm gonna get that one special thing. And then two of them made it into the top two. So that's kind of interesting. But these were part of that blush haul at the beginning of the year. They look kind of the same when you hold them up. I recently talked about the fact that the Can Make Cream Cheek is one of my most used makeup products this year, uh, kind of unexpectedly to me because I don't think of myself as really coveting it. I don't look at it and get, I mean, I actually do kind of get a warm and fuzzy feeling because the formula is so amazing. Um, but you know, it's not like my dream color and my dream brand and my dream everything. It's just so easy to apply, so convenient. The color goes with everything. It blends beautifully with highlighters. It works well under highlighters. And I just ended up reaching for it over and over and over again. I feel like the Cure Weiss is like the high-end version of the same thing. I love these replaceable compact. I actually already had the compact because I have been using Cure Weiss blushes for quite a long time and I had panned the blush that was in here before, maybe even panned it twice. And um, so I just bought the replacement for it. It's in the shade Joyful. And you can see in these little finger swatches that Joyful, that's here on my middle finger, the Cure Weiss, is a little bit lighter 
And I also feel like it's just more beautifully balanced. Like there's, so, I feel like the Can Make is, there are a lot of blushes this color in the world. And strangely, I feel like Joyful has something about it. Some, it's like a touch of orange in this like rich rosy coral blush. It's almost like it's a cross between like all of these different blush colors and it, it has undertones. It's, I, I feel like, and maybe this will like not make sense to, to most of you, but I feel like the can make is like if you go to Home Depot and you get some bare paint or you get some, or you go to Sherwin-Williams and you get Sherwin-Williams paint for your wall. And the Cure Weiss is if you go to Pharaoh and Ball and you get like the Pharaoh and Ball version of the Home Depot paint or like the Sherwin-Williams paint. Like that's what, how I feel about the colors here. I feel like there's something about the Cure Weiss that it seems like it has like a million more different pigments and then they're like layering and reflecting light. There's, there's just something to me about this color. However, I find the formula a little bit more finicky because I think it's it's got like a lot of natural waxes in it. You have to warm it up with your finger. And then once it's warmed up with the finger, finger it blends out beautifully and I love the effect on the cheeks. So because I'm a sucker for beautiful packaging, because I love that this is sustainable and replaceable, and because I have these passionate feelings about the colors, I put this in the number four spot. Um, but the can make even though it's in the number five spot, I wore it more because it was just easier to wear. That's Can Make, and that's Cure Weiss underneath it. So the Can Make is the, the thicker, redder, slightly more burgundy one, and the Cure Weiss is the slightly more sheer, glossy looking one underneath that that's in a slightly lighter color. But they're both such beautiful products. So number four and number five. Okay, number six and number seven were also kind of neck and neck. And one of them is the one that's in the advent calendar. It's the Patrick Ta blush, cream and powder blush in She's So LA. And the one that I was kind of trying to decide which one should should be ahead with it, the one that was neck and neck with it is um, the Ritual Defeat cream blush in Eros. And I actually think that if Eros hadn't been in my advent calendar and I hadn't taken it out recently and then used it and remembered how much it excites me and how beautiful it is, how easy it is to apply. And the, remember that even though this color is sort of intimidatingly rich and deep brown for me in the pan, that it actually applies beautifully to the cheeks. If I hadn't gone through that recently with this, I might actually have ranked it below the Patrick Ta. Cause I think of the Patrick Ta as being like a beautiful kind of rosy brown color and easier to apply and I really covet its packaging and branding. And so I kind of ha I kind of feel more excited about it, but really in application, this one wins. It's just more unique, it's better. And I like the formula better. It's more, it's got that like lipsticky quality. I've been talking about that a lot lately because it's the way that I describe the e.l.f. cream cheek, e.l.f. active lip and cheek palette that I love so much. It just feels like thickly pigmented, richly pigmented, and it feels like you can, you know, just kind of like the Cure Weiss, you warm it up, and then it's really like a, like a thick satin lipstick in terms of the thickness of the pigment and the saturation, I guess, is kind of what I'm talking about. This really has that, but it's dry enough, it's like hard packed enough, that even though it looks like, I mean, that's intense, right? For me to be like, I'm gonna apply this to my cheeks with a blush, that's pretty intense. But because it's kind of hard packed, and it's got this sort of dry pigment quality to the cream, with a brush, when I tap it in and apply it, it diffuses beautifully, it really, really works, and I love the way that it looks on like eyes, lips, and cheeks all together. It's just such a lovely, I don't know, like edgy, icy kind of look. The Patrick Ta, on the other hand, I'm sorry I don't have it here to show you, but I'm gonna put a picture of it up. It's got the cream, the powder I almost never touch because it's just like a bronzing powder, that's fine. I have other ones that I kind of like more. I bought it for the cream. As far as I'm concerned, it's really just like a cream blush. It's a beautiful rosy color, but it's way less brown than it looks in the pan when you apply it. So it's a little bit of a strike against it, especially compared to this, which is truly like a taupe, a brownie taupe. And it's also more Vaseline-y, like a little more sheer. It's a little bit more of a translucent product rather than kind of like a packed hard lipsticky paste. So I prefer this one in all ways, but I do really enjoy that Patrick Ta one and that's why it's number seven. Here's a close up of the Ritual Defeat product. There's a swatch. 
And there's the swatch buffed out, so you can start to see how it it can work as like a, a really intense, like stainy editorial blush. The Patrick Ta is much less dramatic. It's much more of like a mainstream look, easier to wear for me in terms of color, um, but I just, I love this one more. Okay, product number eight is the last one before we get to the two that I've decluttered. It's the last one that I'm keeping. And curiously, it's also one that I've used a lot. It's actually so funny. So this is a Kira Weiss bronzer, technically. You know, for me, bronzer and blush are kind of the same thing. I just like, put stuff on my cheeks. I don't really go in and do, I don't do the like Neapolitan ice cream stripe application of stuff. So this is just another cream cheek for me. And I do love the color and you can see I've dug into it and I've hit pan on it. I've used it a lot more or no, I've used a lot more of it than I've used of the other Kier White's product. And that's because it's a radiance product. So um, it's, again, I already had the compact. So the the um, name on the compact doesn't match what's in here. I can't remember what this is actually called, but I'll put it down below. Like I'll, I'll link the actual product. It's the Kierweiss, the lighter color of the two bronzers, I think that they make. And you know, I used, I think I used these equally. Like I, I used them both a lot. It's just that because this is a radiance product from Kierweiss, it's more, sheer or easier to sheer out. It's got those reflex mixed into it. So when I was gooping it up and warming it up, I was always digging in and, and getting like more product out than I got of the blush. The blush is just, it's more pigmented, right? So, you, so a little bit goes a longer way. And this, I was always getting like a really good goopy bunch of it onto my finger. But another reason that I did that is that this is harder to blend, much harder to blend than the Kier Weiss blushes that I've tried. And I think it's because of those mix-ins. I think it's because of whatever they're using as the reflective particles in this, it just doesn't blend well. It's hard to keep it from getting patchy. And that's why it's at the bottom of the list of everything that I kept this year that I bought for myself. I really do like it. Obviously I've worn it a good bit and when I can get it to work, it's great. I mean, I should say I can get it to work when I use it. I, I've never like gone to apply it and been like, I can't get this to work. It's not that bad. It's just finicky and when something's finicky, in, in a world full of makeup that's not finicky, if it is finicky, it's gonna be at the bottom of the pile for me. Color-wise, it is stunning though. I mean, it is this incredible, kind of slightly coppery, slightly rosy bronze. So pretty, oh my gosh, this swatch makes me wanna start wearing it more again. Like it makes me wanna wear it tomorrow. And there's how it looks blended out, but blending it out kind of made me wanna not wear it tomorrow because I don't know if you can see, just see how it's a little bit, it's hard to get an even blend over like my knuckles there. You, that looks really uneven, right? You can see that. That's the thing that's finicky about it. That's why it's at the bottom. I don't, I wouldn't go back and buy this again. If I had this to do over, I don't think that I would buy this. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep using it, uh, but I I wouldn't buy a Radiance product from Kier Weiss in the future, although I would buy blushes from her again. I really, really love the blushes. And if you have watched my cheek product declutter, then you will already know that the two products that I am not keeping, that I pulled out of my giveaway box to show them in this video, are the Pillow Talk Medium Beauty Light Wand and the Physician's Formula Dewy Blush Elixir. I think both of these are great products. I mean, this is obviously a fantastic product because it's just a different color of the thing that I have in the number one spot. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this product. I think that it is magnificent. It's just that this is meant for a deeper skin tone. It's meant to be like a, a highlighter for a deeper skin tone. And I have had intermittent, intermittent success. I've had some success using kind of like highlighters with pigment or, you know, radiance, deep radiant colors that are designed as highlighters for deeper skin as blushes. Sometimes they work beautifully and sometimes they just don't blend right, don't sit right, don't work right over like the planes of my face because they're really intended to be a highlighting product and not to be providing like the color and the radiance all at once. And they're just not designed for someone with pale skin like mine. And I think that that's the case with this. It's just the way that the copper reflects sat on my cheeks 
never quite looked right. My cheeks always kind of looked the way my hand, when, when I was just holding up my hand with this watch with Kira Weiss bronzer, and it was like from certain angles, it just looked bumpy or a little bit odd. That's how my cheeks always looked when I wore this. I haven't used very much of it, so I'm gonna give it away to someone for whom it will work beautifully. But it's in the second to last spot rather than being in the last spot because, you know, it's like user error or it's like consumer error or just consumer optimism on my part is like, the reason that I have this and that I'm now decluttering it, the reason that I bought it with my budget but that I'm not keeping it. It's not the fault of the product itself like being not good or like, or there being something like redundant about it in my collection, which is like the case with the other thing or something really, really faulty about it. It's none of that. It's just not for me. So there's the component just like the other one but with a much darker color. And there's the swatch. It's breathtakingly beautiful, right? Um, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about, about the way that it's like changing with the planes of, of the hand as I as I turn it. And you've seen, some of you have seen me wear it on camera and some of you in the comments were like, yeah, I see what you're talking about. It looks a little weird. It's sad to have the Physician's Formula Dewey Blush Elixir in the, in the bottom spot. Like it, it's just, it's a really, really good product. I'm actually excited about giving it away because it's like really beautiful. And it's in this nice pump bottle, right? So it's not a doe foot, it's not sullied. I was able to clean it up well, but one of the reasons that it didn't make it through my declutter is that it gets so messy on the inside of here. And that, um, and I said this in the declutter, but usually that doesn't bother me too much, right? Like that's something that people can complain about for the thing that's in my top spot. Um, but I found it very frustrating because it's like, it gets, it gets really messy. There's no way to keep it clean and it, does prohibit like the easy use of it because it get, the stuff gets all over the thing, gets all over your hand, gets all over the bottle. Like it, not it's not like this one where you just take off the top and you're like, Ugh, but then you use it and and it's fine. This one, it just there was no way to keep it clean. It was like, it was like you know when you have a mousse and you like a hair mousse or something and you puff it out and then you stop puffing it and then it keeps puffing out and so there's just no way for it not to just be puffed all over the place and it's just disgusting from the first moment of use. It's not like this kept puffing out like that but it just the same effect happened all over it. It was just difficult and if it had just been that, if it had been an amazing and totally unique and I had just had that issue with it then I would have kept it but it was that combined with the fact that it's just exactly like the M Cosmetics serum, Color Drop Serum Blushes, but the color of this matches with Glossy Peach, no, Peachy Peach. So I got the full complement of M Cosmetics Color Drop Serum Blushes in PR to do a video about them. And then I kept the three that I really, really love, the three that I love the most, and this is a color dupe for one of the other ones. So I had like this whole range of things to choose from. And I feel like this was included in that, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's so similar in formula. Like it's almost exactly the same. And I chose other colors and I decided to give away Peachy Peach in the M Cosmetics formula. And I decided to give this away as well. It, essentially those M Cosmetics ones in colors that suit me better replaced this. And the fact that it was messy the way that it was, wasn't, it was just, you know, added incentive. I'm okay with letting it go. But I didn't hate it. It's in the bottom of spot, but it's not because I hated it. It's a very dewy formula, very skin carry. That is the way the swatch looks blended out a little bit. And that's how it looks more blended out. You can see how incredibly serum-y it looks. It's so pretty. So it's unfortunate there are two that there are two that are being passed along because it would be amazing if I had just like knocked it out of the park 10 out of 10 and like kept all 10 things. But I do feel like I made 10 good decisions for me, like I understand it. I don't think that any of these 10, any of them is a case where I was like, just like, I've got to have something or like it, I got caught up in the hype or I was like, you know, deluding myself into thinking that I would want another version of a thing I already had a bunch of or, you know, like none of them represent, I don't feel icky about any of them. I don't even feel icky about the two that I'm giving away. And, and I feel like that's all that I can ask of myself. Like at this stage, having come through my no by year and through these these two years of budgeting. I'm really interested to find out what I do next year. Like if this was a year when I bought 10 items of makeup, six cream cheeks at the very beginning of the year and then four other things scattered across the year and then two of them ended up not working out and were decluttered at the end of the year. Like that's the picture for me 
personally with my situation, which of course is, you know, I sometimes buy things for review, I receive PR for review, I'm talking about makeup all the time, like all of that kind of influences the way that I interact with my budget and the way that I interact with makeup. So it's just personal to me, right? But I am me now and I will be me next year. So I'm just curious to see like how this will stack up against what I do next year in terms of like buying makeup for myself and you know choosing to maybe expand my makeup collection or not. We will see. Thank you for being here. I hope that this one was fun for you to watch and I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>